All right, guys. So now we get into the nuts and bolts of everything with polymerization and polyethylene. We're going to learn some stuff today that will be kind of a basis for everything we're going to do for the next year. So pay special attention and just over the next few videos, make sure you're really taking some solid notes. All right. So what's the point? By the end of this, you should be able to differentiate between a monomer and a polymer. This should not be super hard to do. You should also be able to explain the process of polymerization as a flowchart. I'm not doing this for you. You need to be able to do this yourself. You should know by now how to make a flowchart. Um, and you should be able to convert your notes from this into a flowchart. You also want to be able to differentiate between HDPE and LDPE, which is high density, low pe uh, high density polyethylene and low density polyethylene. All right. So ethylene as a monomer, as, or as a, as a chemical in general, is extremely useful. You can see here that we use it for polymerization to make polyethylene. And over here, it, it, so it's process, products, uses. And we can use that for pipes and pretty much most of your plastics that you're thinking of. You can oxidate it to make ethylene glycol or polyvinyl acetate. Um, and this is really good for like stuff like paints and um, antifreeze, etc. You can halogenize it which means add a halogen, which is that group seven elements. Um, these are really good for solvents, refrigerants, pipes, um, not so great for the uh, atmosphere. Well, some of them aren't so great. Um, you can alkalize it, um, which means turn into polystyrene. And this is useful for packaging. And you can also hydrate it, which means you take it from ethylene to ethanol. And this is also good for solvents and antiseptics, as well as alcohol but here's a nice little mind map sort of thing concept map for a better way of looking at so you've got your ethylene here and each one of these coming off it you should probably make sure you have this and know it and that's pretty much just everything that was in that previous table um so let's talk about monomers and polymers very quickly uh polyethene or polyethylene is a polymer of ethylene also known as polyethylene um <laughs> So a monomer is basically a single unit. It is the individual unit of a chemical. Okay, so a small molecule, and it means it can be joined together and make a long chain. These long chains are called polymers. So the polymer is a large molecule consisting of smaller identical molecules that repeat. You know, like a, you know, ethylene, 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 ethylene. Um, and over here we see we've got ethylene, the monomer, and we join it up so that it is polyethylene. Um, now. Interestingly, as you're aware of ethylene, it is an alkene, all right? Even though this will have no double bonds in it, it is still polyethylene. Like that part there stays as an ene, as an alkene. Uh, we know this because if we joined it together as an alkane, it would not look like this. It would not, it would be missing H's. Um, so you would have, anyway. So you get the point there, but I'll get rid of that because that is that H is going to be useful for us. Um, so polymerization is the process of making it. Um, so when you manufacture a polymer, we are doing something called polymerization. And during the course, we're going to focus on two, addition and condensation. And there's a third one to come. Um, monomers of ethylene are joined together to make polyethylene. Polyethylene is an addition polymer. In other words... We've got the polyethylene here, sorry, the ethylene, and we just add one together. It breaks this bond here, which makes this one here a, it breaks the double bonds in both, which gives you the C, um, C, there's one H there, one H there, but it means you've got a free radical, well, I should put that there, a free radical on the end of that poly, of the end of the polyethylene until it's terminated. So when we draw a polymer, um, always draw at least three monomer units. Okay, so you can draw it like this, or you can draw three together. So if you're drawing a polymer, make sure you draw three monomer units. Um, initiators are usually used. So dibutyl peroxide are re is really common, and peroxides in general tend to be the ones we use as initiator. So the initiator splits into form and it forms two free radicals okay so it splits down here and you've like that bond there breaks and you've now got two free radical um, butyl peroxide uh, sorry butyl oxides now 
one of these bonds to the end of the eth ethylene and it breaks that double bond and this allows a spare electron which will, so it, if it bonds here and here's our um, peroxide there if it bonds there you're going to have a free radical on this side um, and that allows it to join with another monomer which we'll have a look at in a minute um, but why do we use ethylene instead of ethane okay so I want you to have a think about that like that's I'm not answering that question for you you can tell me in class um, think about why we use ethylene instead of ethane um, so free radical process and we'll talk about LDPE here LDPE um, so this is an addition polymerize, polymerization of ethylene uh, so polymerization of ethene requires heat um, and a catalyst to break the double bond and link the monomers together okay so you need to have heat and a catalyst to bring it together um, it's also done at a really high pressure so the ethylene is subjected to pressures of about 100 to 300 megapascals before being mixed with an initiated particle to such as a peroxide to make it happen all right so the initiator starts the reaction okay um, you know I'm gonna get rid of this here because the initiator is not a catalyst in this case here um, so the initiator starts the reaction the peroxide breaks you now have two reactive free radicals and see how it's got that oxygen out there oxygen is super duper reactive we then activate our ethylene our monomer so this comes along and it upsets this so we go um, O uh, R remember just means regular chain um, we go there will be C so that's an H well that's an H there's another one and there's our last one but that means there's a bonus unpaired electron which makes it now the end of the ethylene is the free radical so you now have an activated monomer radical so that's activation then you have propagation which means you've still got your so here's your free radical there so we see C free radical O O there's your H's and along comes another one um, and it will that free radical will break this double bond here and you've now got a free radical on the end and a new bond will form okay so this end monomers means this happens over and over and over so it comes along and just one by one one by one it gets bigger and longer and then we terminate it um, we terminate it when the free radical chains combine you can do this uh, in several ways and we'll go through them in class in a bit more detail but one is to um, dump in a bunch of free radicals the other one is to cool it down if you cool it down a lot um, they'll stop reacting they'll all join together they'll lose their collision speed so when we've done this when the free radical when these free radical chains combine a polyethylene molecule is formed um, now so that's how we get low D low LDP low density polyethylene we get more than that in a second if we can use a catalyst to make a high density polyethylene so a catalyst means there's a lower activation energy lower temperature reduces the production cost so it's really useful for us it also makes it safer too to be honest so the use of a catalyst results in the growth of long and unbranched chains this is a high density polymer so when you're just adding them on one by one you'll get these weird shapes happening as well and it's sort of so ideally it'd be just a straight line but you'll get these weird shapes and that's what makes it low density because they can't quite pack in nice and tightly but when we use a catalyst you get long unbranched chains which means we can pack it in nice and dense the difference here they can be packed in tight together that's high density polyethylene now we're going to talk about the Ziegler-Nada catalyst um, it's a triethyl aluminium catalyst which we use to make HDPE and it uses titanium atoms at its core uh, to make um, to make this work to and we'll have a picture in a, in a second so Carl Ziegler and Giulio Nata uh, shared the Nobel Prize in the 60s for it um, and it's called an organometallic catalyst because um, it's all organic see it's all carbon 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 blah 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 with a metal in there 
All right, so this is the way it works. You've got your Ziegler-Nata catalyst. Um, it bonds, so the Ziegler-Nata chain, that's this part here, bonds to a titanium atom that has an unpaired electron. All right, that's all you really need to be thinking of there. The unpaired electron meets an ethylene here, okay? It will then join it. It will break that bond and combine it with the R. So this one here, this one here has been moved up to that spot there. So it rearranges itself so that the carbon is up, so the ethylene chain is at the top there, and the titanium has this free electron again. And then it meets another one. What that's saying, that R, is that's saying that can actually be quite long chains. It doesn't have to just be ethylene. It can be longer chain ones. Um, and so you, it now bonds there very loosely, and it then rearranges it so that it's now two. And if this just happens over and over and over and over, we can get a very long straight chain off that titanium atom. Um, and they're very easy to break apart. So let's have a look at our two different types. If you need a break, now's the time. Pause for a few minutes and then come back in. Um, so we're at HDPE and LDPE here. So low density polyethylene and high density polyethylene. Here we see one which is branched, okay, and it has all these structural subunits here. Um, and it's just a nice straight chain. So that's an unbranched one, a linear. And here we have a highly branched one. It's got all these chains that just pull off and make it... Um, low density. So HDPE is linear polymer with no to a few side chains. It allows for very tight packing um, and HDPE is defined by a density greater than or equal to 0.941 grams per centimeters cubed. That's almost as dense as water. So it'll still float but at the, at the lowest level but not for long. Um, and it's used to make bowls, buckets, any hard plastic that you, where you need the plastic to be tough. Plastics are what we're making here. LDPE um, has high, is highly branched, so the packing can't be as tight, which means it's got less strong intermolecular forces um, as there's less dipole, instantaneous dipole-dipole. Um, so it's not as tough, it's weak. Um, so it's a lower tensile strength, but an increased ductility. Um, and what this means is you can stretch it. Um, and if it is a density of like 0.9, sorry, 0.91 to 0.94, that's your low density. There's ultra low density as well, which is below that. So being flexible and strong, we use it for plastic bags, electric insulation, not things such as buckets. Um, we're just going to go through a bit more detail about the different types now. Um, here we see branched. This is what it looks like, and you can see it's all stretched off like this. Here is our unbranched one, and you can see it's this nice straight line there. Um, here are the properties. For example, these, these are the differences in the structures. See how it's nicely tightly packed. This one's all over the shop. Um, it's done at eh, lowish to high temperatures. Um, high pressure, stupid high pressures, done as low pressures. Um, Oxygen or an organic peroxide is an, the initiator, and here we use an allium based metal oxide. So there's an easier way to do it, and it's this one here. But you get different properties. Um, so polyethylene tends to be insoluble in water, it's very stable, which is both a good and a bad thing. I want you to think about why that might be the case. It is inert, so it means it's wonderful for storing reactive chemicals. Large number of dispersion forces between the long chains, which means it's tough and strong. And the thermoplastics, these are all thermoplastics we've talked about, can be recycled, which is they can be melted down and reformed into a new shape. HDPE, HDPE, um, as melted chains can flow past each other, and it's, it's very easy to do. Um, and that's it for today, and we'll see you in class. That was a long one. Hope you hung in there.